what I hope is going to be a quick repot. <laughs> Famous last words, especially when one of my dendrobiums is in spike. Oh, that's dendrobium sutkinoi. The best spike so far. These two dendrobiums were rescued last year. I had them in Lekka and self watering first. That didn't work at all. So, the best way for me to rescue a dendrobium is to use lava rock. They absolutely seem to adore lava rock. It's a self watering setup and it works because the lava rock is small. <clears throat> there would be no need to touch these orchids for the next coming years if it weren't for this and this is bothering me that this has happened. I have several of these 15 centimeter pots that I treated with bleach and a scrubby pad because I wanted to keep my pots nice and clean, not have them look like this after a while, you know. Just trying to keep my collection looking presentable, let's just say. Well, it turns out that don't clean your pots with bleach. Now, this is dangerous because I keep slipping and the pot keeps breaking over and over a little bit more. Every time I lift the pot out of the mask, I'm getting less resistance and I am so scared that these are gonna, you know, one day fall out of my hands when I finished soaking. Like right now, they're pretty heavy. Lava rock is heavier than Lekka and Lifting them up one day, there's going to be an accident. And unfortunately, seeing as the pots are compromised anyway, it's time to get into them and get compadres out that were not washed or cleaned or scrubbed with bleach back in the day. And hopefully it's just a simple maneuver from one pot to the other. You know what's frustrating me about this though? I know that there are some pots elsewhere that probably are brittle as well and I cannot see them. I wanted to do them all in one video. Well, <laughs> I guess we're going to maybe split it up or do an orchid potpourri at some point just in case I find the other ones. Now, the idea being, yeah, quick moment of silence there. The idea being to do this with as little disruption as possible. And I hope the wind is not catching the mic. I do have that little fuzzy dead cat thing on, even though I don't like calling it that. The idea being not to disrupt this as best as possible. I would love my gyrac horn to bloom. Pretty, pretty bronze bloom antelope type. So I'm trying to squeeze the pot where I don't think roots are, probably around the base. And if there's a lot of resistance, that means they're deeper than I thought, which is great, but not in this instance, please. Oh my goodness, I am feeling a little bit queasy about doing this. Because the resistance I'm feeling means probably, yeah, the microfiber is going to come along with it. Oh, didn't want that, didn't want that. Okay. We're just going to put all the lava rock inside. Remove some of Baloo's hair, maybe. That's fussing too much. I don't want that fuss. So we have a somewhat okay root system. I hope that that is in focus. I'm trying to protect my mic. Sorry about the circumstances here today. I can't keep doing the procrastination on this, though. So we're going to keep the orchid in the middle because what I want to do at some point is cut off the back bulbs right here so that she has more space to grow, maybe create another lead. And as they are without roots, that is easily done while the orchid is still in the pot. I'm gonna forfeit the support, seeing as I don't need that anymore. She is rooted in and just use the lava rock in the pot and fill up. Oof, I have to do this one more time with the dendrobium gyrac horn, which is probably not going to bloom this season. But I'm just glad I've saved it. It has a recovery growth coming. We'll see that just now. Oh gosh. I keep saying I'm going to do this tomorrow when it's not as windy. I'm going to do this when it's not windy. Well, I can't wait anymore. I want to get certain things out of the way. There's a schedule to keep here. And some things I want to film because they are updates to videos from last year, especially because these were so poorly. They were on death's door and this is the progress. 
after lava rock was self-watering, that we have one of them in spike. And also the fact that lava does work as a self-watering setup media kind of thing because of how small it is, how small the pot is. So all the little gaps and bits in between, all the crevices and the chunks and everything, allows for a high water retention for when an orchid is in active growth, but also allows me to keep it a little bit drier when necessary throughout the winter season so the roots don't rot, which I'm hoping right now is not going to happen as a result of what I've just done. Push comes to shove, at least she's going to then push out another new growth so the orchid isn't lost. I really wanted to see those blooms again though, but on the off chance that she's going to throw out a new growth, while throwing out new roots and it's going to just get hotter in the next two months. I wanted this out of the way and hopefully not forfeit the spike. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. It seems like I have some lava rock left over that I can fuss with a little bit later. And let's get to gyrac horn. Same procedure here, little squeeze. Let's see that we tip into the pot, stay as efficient as possible. Looking a little bit better in here than the Sutkinoi. That root system has a lot more promise in it. So before we get ahead of ourselves now, let's see what how deep these roots went. I'm also feeling a little bit of resistance. Not as much though. There we go. That's a darn slight better than it was in 2021, where I only had one strand that was holding on for dear life, which I used as anchoring. <laughs> so let's get you in. I'm also putting this one more into the middle because the same principle will apply. I will be cutting off the back bulbs at some point, hopefully creating a new lead and more chance of roots growing if a new lead develops. I would like to pick out some of the decayed velamen in here before pouring that back in, but we'll just deal with it as best as we can, right. There are root tips in here. I'm going to get some more seaweed water, which is what I have. I'm going to wait for the breeze to stop. This is not a breeze. This is a full storm. Just wind, wind, wind all the time. I'm going to have to take the pot with me. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Walk the pot to the bucket of seaweed. All right, because of root tips, I'm going to submerge this orchid into the seaweed water. All right, there we go. Now, hopefully as I fill up, it's just going to be gentler than if I were just to put the lava rock straight back in, bashing the root tips. So lava rock, of course, is not as buoyant as Lekka is and can do some serious damage on roots, rip the layman off, all that stuff that we really don't want when we talk about being careful with orchid roots. Sorry about my shadow. Let's start with the back. In the back, it's usually a safe place to go. And then we can just gently push the lava rock into position around the front. Now, to my liking, she looks way too high. Yeah, that's far too high. Oh, as much as I hate doing this, I'm gonna do it. I'm not happy with that. Just watch. I'm trying not to get rushed because the conditions are making me nervous. This whole, you know, repot is making me nervous. The wind is making me anxious. So I'm really, really not rushing this because I don't want to wake up tomorrow on a beautiful calm day after waiting three, four days to get this little job done and kick myself for not having done it properly. Just because the conditions are the way they are, and I just can't wait any longer, so 
At this point in time, now that I've disturbed the orchid, I might as well do it properly. And <laughs> when I stop filming, just watch. The wind is just going to drop and it's going to be one of those calm afternoons. Anyway, now she looks very, very loose. Even the wind is showing us that she's wobbly in the pot. But the intention is that I'm going to be taking off the back bulbs at some point anyway and then she won't be as loose. Where she lives right now on the east side, bottom shelf, there's no wind down there at all. So I'm not concerned about not having opted to put the support in. I don't really want the support. I do a lot of light training, so it should be okay. There they are. <laughs> Whew, at least they've been dealt with and uh, now it's just time to get them back into their shelf and just hope Sutkinoi here is going to bloom for us. I am hoping the sticky substance that I feel here is not pests so I'm just having a look. It's just happy sap. I have to watch out for these guys because of scale and scale gives the same kind of sticky glossy residue that looks like happy sap, but it's actually scale coming. So no, no scale. Anyway, I, if you've watched this, thank you so very, very much. An update on my almost lost, but now rescued gyrac horn and sudkinoi. And I hope we haven't lost the buds. Even though she's living outside, these buds are not exposed to any breeze. So fingers crossed, peoples. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry for this somewhat off rushed, out of kilter kind of video. But anyway, I wanted to update on these guys and do this on camera. Couldn't wait anymore. <laughs> Have yourselves a beautiful day. On one condition though, that you please stay safe and take care. Bye. Quick add-on. There are more pots. <laughs> you see this? And oh, I want to change this pot because look at the roots growing. But I can't go in just yet because look at the spikes. Look at this. Here we have another one. Coilostylus ciliaris, finally. We didn't have any blooms from her in 2021. I am so in two minds about repotting this one at this stage with new root growth and spikes growing. But I just wanted to show this to you. <laughs> oh, this is so, so dangerous. <sighs> but I do want to see these blooms.